Hello everyone, I am Neeraj and today we are going to discuss about migration of RDS MySQL instance to Aurora cluster. So here we go. We are going to discuss method to migrate to Aurora cluster and the lab on it. So type of migration. There are two different types of migration. In general, it's a physical migration or a logical migration. Physical migration means that a physical copy of database files are used to migrate the database. Logical migration means that the migration is accomplished by applying logical database changes such as insert, update and deletes. So migration to Aurora cluster. See there are different way to migrate an Aurora cluster and that could be like from your RDS instance especially I am talking about MySQL. So through RDS MySQL instance, you can uh, migrate to Aurora cluster or if you have an external MySQL, external means MySQL database running any in your own premises. If you want to migrate either in RDS or Aurora cluster, you can migrate it. How we are going to see the uh, theoretical part here. Like if you have a RDS MySQL instances running, you can do a physical migration using convert to Aurora read replica means that when you are launching an RDS MySQL instance there is an option to convert your I'm mean not convert create a read replica of Aurora cluster so you can create a read replica of Aurora cluster and then you can uh, you can either uh, tell the application to point to the new read uh, read cluster and then convert the read cluster into standalone. Now, if you have a RDS MySQL, yes, in, I mean the second option, you can do physical migration. How? Using a DB snapshot means that if you have an RDS MySQL database is running, you can create take a snapshot and then you can convert into Aurora cluster. Using the DB snapshot, you can create an Aurora cluster. Third option is MySQL external to AWS RDS using a logical you can do it using MySQL dump utility like export input. MySQL external to AWS RDS or an Aurora physical migration you can do using persona extra DB backup on the source DBS. What you can do is you can download this uh, utility on your machine where the MySQL database is running. Using this, you can take a physical backup of your database, move the file to S3 and then restore from snap S3 option, you can do it. And then you can create either your AWS RDS instance or you can create an Aurora cluster. Now, there is some limitation, I mean, especially in case of MySQL, if you're going to do like if the MySQL database you are migrating, sorry, before that I want to, this first step, I will show you in the lab. From RDS MySQL DB instance, physically how to convert to read replica and how to uh, convert again the read replica to new one and what are the points we need to consider before doing that, I will discuss that in the lab. So here limitation, if the MySQL database you are migrating to Aurora, MySQL use memcached, remove the memcached before migrating it. That is an important point. Certain MySQL feature like MyS, MyISAM storage engine are not available in Amazon Aurora. Physical migration has a following limitation. InnoDB page size must parameter must be set to default. You need to check the DB parameter value. You create a DB parameter value from the default one and change the parameters. InnoDB data file path, this one is very important, must be configured with only one data file and that use the default data file name IDB data one. If there are two files with a different name, that cannot be migrated to Aurora cluster. Database with a two data file or with a data file with a different name cannot be migrated using this method. In that situation, you have to go with an option of logical migration. Take the export and import here. InnoDB log files in the group parameter must be set to default value 2. 
Now let's go to the lab. See, I have uh, in my AWS demo, I have already logged into RDS instance, uh, RDS services, click on database instance. What I will do is first I will launch a MySQL RDS. Let's go to an RDS. Uh, choose MySQL first because we have to go. Uh, Dev and test. My uh, test test db1 you can have a credential now standard size you can have m5 you can have m4 general purpose you can enable the storage uh, what you can know, uh, create don't create and standby because I have to show something uh, additional connectivity default public accessibility default security group mysql rds stv no preferences password authentication additional configuration my db name my test db1 a 5.7 5.7 yes let me check that which version we have chosen yeah see this we are going to we are choosing 5.722 okay so here we'll go to additional configuration my test db enable automatic backup yes we have to because replica we can't create it enable encryption no remove it enable performance inside no log edit uh, we can do this or leave it maintenance no maintenance enable protection yeah let's create it so let's wait for some time once it will create i will log into this database and then i will show you and then we'll see how i will will see that how we can migrate it so i'm putting the video for some time i'm pausing it now mysql database is up and running okay if you go and click here in mysql database we have an endpoint using the endpoint i have already logged in to uh, using mysql workbench and show databases if i click here it will be able to fetch how many database has been created and using my sdb1 so we have already created a uh, mysql rds here we go we'll choose here and we'll go to an action create aurora read replica very simple create a read replica create aurora read replica we can create an aurora read replica because our database which is currently running is in automatic backup mode so click here okay now when you create an aurora read replica from your rds put higher version on a, a cluster site okay so when you are choosing this you always choose higher version either you choose 2.7 and 7.1 db instance class you can choose it there's no option there's no problem create a read replica like you know aurora when you create an aurora there will be one is a writer other will be a reader so if you want a primary instance only you don't want to create read replica you can choose no if you want to create a read replica in a different zone you can create interesting part so i mean we can do that we can let's just start with and create so one will be a primary and one will be a read replica in that situation so let's do that db identifier migrated migrated db1 network in the same vpc publicly accessible yes ability zone no preference create a new choose from existing security group so we have mysql rdssg and one more is the um, rds oracle mysql test rg this is same this is 5.7 you can choose it encryption decrypted failover preference zero backup by default one days disable enhanced monitoring 
log export all this i am roll when this will say um, auto money uh, minor by upgrade yes no preference create a read replica now see this once i will refresh it <coughs> sorry i want to add one important point here first this is the migrated db1 under a hyphen cluster is a cluster name this will be both are showing reader here but once will one once everything will be up one will be a reader other will be a writer and from here everything will be get replicated here i will show how whatever i will try to create in this primary uh, primary means uh, rds instance it will get replicated in aurora instance but once i will touch the aurora replication will be stopped means that if you want to someone do a consultation yes you can do the rds mysql to an aurora cluster but don't do a read write operation in aurora cluster once everything will be up ask your application to move and then convert it in, convert it into the standalone now one important point whenever you create an a uh, mysql rds instance is always better to create multi az deployment what is multi az deployment you can check my previous video i have explained everything in detail because how this function in the background is it will take the full backup of your my uh, my test db1 then it will move to another availability zone restore there and then it will configure the replication lag and all so your primary mysql rds instance will go in some high io during the backup that is the reason you, it is always preferred if you have a production system always create a multi az deployment so your backup will be always uh, taken from your secondary instance here also it is taking time it will take time i will pause that but this availability will go to modification mode also sometime you do it on a lab and you will see that i'm pausing the video for some times because it will take time and we'll come back hi so see now the aurora cluster has been created and it is available once you click it see here migrated db1 cluster connectivity see this this is called a uh, reader in point and the writer in point using the writer in point i have already made a connection here say this mysql at the rate migrated db1 and if i run here so databases databases we we'll able to see here the database now we'll go to my uh, my sql at the test rdbs instance and instance and what i will do is i will create a database okay so we'll say create database test db okay it is giving some we can select and run is now your database is created if you run it again so databases it will show here test db now i will go to the mysql migrated db1 and i will run it again and see here things are getting replicated so here also it's showing test db now if i go and create first i will put it use database use test db will use test db and now i will create one table let's create a table now once you create a table see here the table got created if i will go to the my say my sql at the migrated db what i will do is i will put again use test db and i will hit enter i will hit enter okay there is some syntax problem with this uh, workbench so run it like this and now when i say show tables my 
table one two three is already my um, my table one two three is getting migrated here. I am using in point that is called writer in point. So if your application is writing to MarDS MySQL, it will get replicated to the Aurora cluster. Even the writer in point, I'm able to see. So the important point is you have to tell shut down the application migrate. I mean, once the migration is done, ask your application to shut down. Get the replica uh, replication lag to be zero and move your application point to Aurora cluster. That's all. What we will do is we'll go to the cluster and we'll go here. And what we'll do is we'll choose an Aurora migrated cluster. And now we'll go to the Aurora cluster. We'll go to an action and see this. Promote. Promoting this read replica to a primary instance will take in a few minutes to complete. The replication will stop once the promotion will be done. Promote the read replica. See, now when we go to our MySQL bench here, and if I will create another table, one, two, three, five, six. The table got created here in RDS instance on 5.6. But if I go to the Shikwa here, it will not come. Now the replication is stopped and this has been moved to. Now your migration is done. If you want, you can stop your application. You go here, you choose your test DB. There is no action. You go and stop it. No, just stop it or you can delete it. You can stop it. So this is the way you can do the migration of your RDS MySQL instance to the Naroda cluster. Very easy, very simple. Now the next topic we are going to discuss about is Redshift database and the lab on it. Thank you. Thanks again. Let's keep learning.